absolutely in awe. How much larger is this than any of the other machines that you've worked on finally? It is huge. I was working in the uh, subway, several subway projects uh, in Madrid with uh, uh, 10 meter machines. And uh, those are big, but nothing compares with this one. Uh, and we are glad of having the record for a while, but we also can't wait for someone else going beating us because that would be great for this business. We totally believe it's doable. And uh, where is the limit? We don't know. We'll find out in the next years. Okay, we should go on in. Sure. The scaling of this uh, section of this tunnel is, is, is amazing. I believe for, that until now nobody has had a real taste of the real dimension of this machine. Now that the TV is buried and we can start uh, looking at the tunnel behind it, and now the feeling is great. When we started mining, we said the, the configuration of the cutting tool was such that we have uh, four cutter head arms uh, filled with a cutter disc and another four filled with rippers. Once we have mined uh, through the concrete head wall plus the jet grouting protection we cut in this area, it's about time to replace those cutter discs by actual rippers. We are replacing some of the, the cutting tools that we can replace under atmospheric conditions. And uh, from this moment on, we will continue with a more EPD cutting tools uh, configuration in the cutter head. I mean, we are not anticipating on going back to this. However, if we feel that we have to do it to improve our performance, we have that ability and we'll do it. But so far, we are not planning on it. How many safe havens have you got out ahead of uh, ahead of you now? You're in safe haven two. There is one more, number three. Number three is a combination of uh, mortar columns and uh, jet grouting. And uh, this is going to be the last one. This is 160 rings ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, once uh, we start mining after that safe haven, we encounter the viaduct, so we need to mine underneath it and then we bury the machine in the city and there is nothing else. We will be totally at our own until we hold through in the other side. How many segments are there in a ring? Ten. Ten yes. segments and the key or nine and one? Nine and a key. Nine. The segment lining was designed by HNTV. HNTV received the inputs from Intexa out of Spain. The steel river was the preference for the cages of the segments. There is a lot involved in the design of the liner of this project, and the seismic is, plays a key role. At the end of the project, we are hoping to get uh, five, six swings per working day. There will be a lot of zeros, and uh, there has to be some tens and some elevens to make it happen. The machine is designed for 22, 23 wings. So far, the best we have done is uh, seven rings in 16 hours. We are very proud of it. We know that we can do it. We can do better. We always gave ourselves a good 1,500 feet of learning curve. And we have mined 430 feet so far. We have six operators. We have two Spaniards. And uh, the two of them had previous experience with uh, 12 meter machines. They know what it takes in an EPV that dimension. But also we have four Americans with plenty of experience in EPV. So the combination of both the local knowledge plus the large diameter experience of our uh, technicians from Spain, the, that uh, combination of the best of both worlds probably is one of the keys for the success of the operating of the machine so far. And the real deal so far have been, has been be able to process all the information at the same time. This is the real deal. It is true that this TV has a lot of features to ensure that uh, we are protected for anything that at least we know that could happen to us once we are underneath the city. And we expect a way slower learning curve. After barely 58 rings, the knowledge they have of the machine to me is impressive. We knew we were going to be there, but not that soon. They are working pretty well. Ultimately, we have the, the right amount of people, and if in the future it is proven that we need more, we will continue adding skilled people to our crews, skilled laborers. They are doing a great job. Uh, all of them had previous experience in uh, EPB tunneling, so that is why probably the learning curve for this TBN is being shorter than we were expecting.
we have a two inline screw conveyor ribbon type. The diameter, interior diameter is five feet, and it is designed to digest boulders up to three feet in diameter. This is the final gate of the screw conveyor system, and this is the hopper that ultimately dumps the mag on the top of the TBN conveyor belt. And inside this uh, hopper, this mag chute, we have a grizzly. That is the one that if there are boulders coming through, we catch down those there and we remove them. So there's no stone crusher in the head? No. That's brave. Uh, we are not very fans of the stone, crush stone crushers in the head. It's an additional maintenance concern. And were it not for operating with a slurry system, we don't see the point of it. At some point we were checking, or we were assessing the option of having one in the transition between our screw conveyor and conveyor belt. Uh, we didn't think it was going to be necessary. So far we are working very well without it. Hope we continue doing the same thing. These are man locks here, but there are material locks. Are these the only two you've got? There is a third one at uh, nine position. And there are two, two locks. One is at 1.30 and the other one is at 10.30. That is the reason why you cannot see it. Each man lock is for six person. In case we were to do saturation diving, we can connect our hyperbaric shuttle through the erector to these man locks and transfer people compressed from here to the surface. We are expecting a hauling through in the north portal by November next year. Any better we can do would be great because we would be buying some time for all the work happening behind the TBM. We need to make as much uh, time as we can for those as well. What is it that really um, is at the limits of these things? Mm, I don't know. It depends. In an urban environment, such as uh, the one that this project is, uh, the logistics could be more tricky than the tunneling process itself. Being in the middle of nowhere, makes things uh, easier. Being in an urban environment like this one, that is challenging. 